Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technology Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on filter design. The objective of this video is to show how can we actually design a depth capacitor circuit. This will be the part 13 series discussion on filter design. The earlier on discussion, I have put the playlist under the description. So take a look on those videos if you're keen to know more about filter design. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Thank you so much, guys. Firstly, let's understand why we need to have a tap capacitor circuit. Firstly, in order to have a tap capacitor circuit, we actually require one more additional component, which is for this case a capacitor. By having one more additional component simply also means that the cost of the bomb actually increased. So specifically, why we need to have this tap capacitor circuit? So instead by word, let me work up this example for you to understand why we need to have a tap capacitor circuit. Okay, this example tells us to design a resonance circuit to operate between a source resistor of 150 ohms and a load resistor of 1000 ohm. So from this diagram here, you can say over here, basically this is the source resistor, 150 ohm. This is the load resistor, 1000 ohm. Okay, the load Q must be equals to 20, which means that the circuit Q must be equals to 20 at the resonance frequency of 50 megahertz. So from this parallel resonator, okay, you can see that these two resistors are connected in parallel. Okay, the first thing I can do is I combine the effect of these two resistors in parallel into one, okay, which we call the total resistor, which is 130. Okay, so how we calculate, okay, I believe you already know, these two source resistor and also the load resistor, they are connected in parallel. So I use this equation, I can calculate the total RT, which is 130 ohm. Next, okay, from here, as I mentioned earlier on, this is a parallel resonator. So earlier on, we have this discussion to discuss how can we find the circuit Q for a parallel resonator. Simply, it will be QP equals to RP over XP. Okay, if you still do not know this equation, take a look on the playlist in order to understand this. So this is QP over RP over XP. Okay, QP, okay, which is the circuit Q, which is given by the question, which is 20. RT, okay, which is the total resistor, which is 130 ohm. So from here, okay, the only thing that I do not know is the XP. So I can easily find my XP, which is 6.5 ohm. Okay, next, with SP, I can easily find my L and C value. Okay, you can see over here, XP is equal to WL and also equals to 1 over WC. Okay, this radian is actually equal to 2 pi F. Can you see here, this is 2 pi F. I'm given the resonance frequency of 50 megahertz. So from here, I can easily find my L value and also easily find my C value. So from here, I calculate that my L value, which is 20.7 nano Henry, and my C value, which is 489.7 picofarad. So with the finding of L and C value, okay, I can start to design my parallel resonator having the source resistor of 150 ohm and the load resistor of 1000 ohm. Okay, however, from this circuit, you realize that I don't have lots of flexibility okay, because the circuit Q and QT, they are fixed okay, once the value of RT is specified. Can you see here? Okay, I probably cannot control my bandwidth. Okay, this QT is also fixed. As long as I know my R, okay, there is basically no way that I can change the QT. Hence, because of this, okay, therefore, we need to have tap capacitor circuit in order to have one more degree of freedom. Okay, let's take a look on the next slides. In order to gain an extra degree of freedom, okay, so this is what I mentioned here, so that the bandwidth and impedance ratio can be chosen independently, one extra circuit element is required. Okay, so this is the meaning here. One way to do this is to divide either the inductor or capacitor into two series component okay, with the low resistor load across one of them. Okay, so from here you can see that 
we actually have this step C. Okay, this is so called the one more capacitor that we add into here. Okay, so this is called a tap inductor. Okay, extra inductor. So this is called a tap inductor circuit. Okay, one thing also need to take note. Okay, the low resistor is actually appeared. Okay, together with the tap circuit here. Okay, so if you tap your C, okay, so this resistor must be a lower value as compared to RS. Same for here also. So this value must be a low resistor value as compared to my RS. In short, RL must be smaller than RS. Okay, load resistor must be smaller than the source resistor. So this is what you mean. Okay, this type of circuit is called tap circuit. Tap circuit are often used in oscillator and narrow band high frequency amplifier. Next, this is what tap C, which I have described on the previous page. So how can we actually arrive on a certain parameters here? So let's define some of the... Okay, so this is the circuit Q, which I have illustrate earlier on so this is we call the overall q or circuit q okay we also have the q okay for this parallel resonator here so basically this belongs to a smaller q over here so the objective is how can we convert this tap capacitor circuit into a parallel resonator over here okay from here you can see that this is a parallel resonator how can we convert this tap capacitor to a parallel resonator okay let's take a look on this on the next slides Okay, so this is what I mentioned earlier on the tap capacitor. How can we actually arrive at the overall parallel resonator? So basically, we need to have this form here. Okay, with this form, okay, I will describe why we need to have this form. We actually can be convert from tap okay, to this form and then to a parallel resonator. Okay, so how can we do this? Firstly, can you see here, this so-called Q okay, basically can be converted into CSE and RSE, which means that they are in series. Okay, I can conclude or convert this capacitor and this resistor, convert them into series. So once I convert them into series, okay, this is actually represent from this form here. Next, I can also represent from here. Okay, I can actually add up these two C value in parallel. I add up them in effect here. So I can also convert my RSE to RT. Okay, so this is actually how we can convert from a tap capacitor to a parallel resonator with an intermediate so-called uh, diagram as illustrated over here. So in short, okay, we can once we have the design specification, okay, for example, we have all the R2, okay, we also have the RT, okay, once we have the resonant frequency, once we have bandwidth, okay, we can start to design the L, C1, and C2 value. Okay, we need to ignore the coil loss okay but if we need okay we can actually include this easily but over here okay i will just assume that the core loss is negligible okay let's start this is the design rule okay for example if you need to design a tech capacitor okay these are the steps we i actually in short want to break them into two parts here so this is the first two three four five these are the five steps that is essential so you need to calculate all these five steps here okay at steps number five okay once you calculate your qp okay you can either qp is less than 10 then you will follow this column here if qp is more than 10 then you follow this column here you understand what i mean so we need to do this step one step two step three step four and step number five once we calculate step number five Okay, we can easily calculate the parallel resonant Q. And from here, once we calculate whether is it more than 10 or less than 10, we actually use different column to implement, to calculate my C value. So if let's say my parallel resonator is less than 10, I will use the this column here to calculate my C value. Okay, if it's more than 10, I will use this column here to calculate my C value. Okay, instead by word, again, let me use an example to illustrate this okay for example for this case here okay i i look this total rt which is 8100 ohm okay my r2 which is 100 ohm remember this r2 must be smaller than this rt here remember i told you that typically this r value must be smaller than this rt value here so again i'm also given the resonant frequency of 1.5 megahertz and I'm also given the task to design with a bandwidth of 100 kilohertz. 
Okay, so these are the one, two, three, four, five steps. Okay, all the five steps I have illustrated over this box here. So these are the five essential steps that you need to do in order to design a tap capacitor circuit. So from here, you can easily see that I actually implement these five steps step by steps. Okay, so for example, how to calculate my QT. Okay, the circuit Q is simply the resonant frequency over the bandwidth, which I have calculated here. So my circuit Q is equal to 15. Okay, next I can find my C value, okay, which is 1 over 2 pi bandwidth RT. Okay, so this 2 pi, this is my bandwidth. Okay, bandwidth is tasked to be 100 kilohertz. So over here is 100 kilohertz. My RT is 8.8100 ohms. So from here, I calculate my capacitor, which is 196.5 picofarad. Okay, so this is not the final outcome of capacitor. Maybe I should say that this is a reference capacitor. So I will calculate this reference capacitor. Once we calculate the reference capacitor, okay, we are ready to calculate my inductor value. Okay, so there will be only one inductor. So this will be the inductor value here. So I can actually calculate my inductor value as 57.3 microhenry. So once I've done this again, I can calculate the N, okay, which is the numbers of turn. Okay, so how can I calculate square root RT over R2? Okay, so this one I know is 8100. Okay, which is over here, and my R2, which is 100, I can calculate my N value as equals to 9. So once I've done this, I'm ready to calculate my parallel resonator Q. Okay, so how to calculate here? So basically, this is the circuit Q, which is found over here, 15. Okay, this is the N, which I calculate, which is 9. So I calculate this, I found out that my parallel Q, which is 1.67, which means that it's less than 10. So what I need to do is, because it's less than 10, I need to use this column here to find my C value. Okay, again, from here, you can see that this is step number six here. So this step number six, I just follow this. So this is my circuit Q, which is 15. The number of turn is nine. So from here, I can calculate my QP parallel Q, which is 1.333. Okay, so next, I can calculate my C2 value. Okay, so C2 is basically one part of the tap capacitor, okay, which is QP over, this is the radian 2 pi F of R2. Okay, again, from here, you can calculate that my QP, which is 1.33, which is here, 2 pi F, the resonant frequency, which is 1.5 megahertz from here. This is the resonant frequency. So I, this is how I get my resonant frequency. So from here, I can calculate my C2 value as 1414 picofarad. Next, I can also calculate my CSE. Okay, so my CSE is equal to C2, okay, which is over here. Okay, which is C2 1 plus QP over QP squared here. So you can see over here how I actually obtain the calculation. So this is 1414 pico 1 plus. Okay, so this is the parallel Q, which is 1.333 from here. So again, from here, I can calculate my CSE as 2210 picofarad. Okay, and then last but not least, let's compute the C1 value. So once I have this CSE, okay, I can actually calculate my C1 value okay, by this equation here. Okay, so I can easily calculate my C1 value as 216 picofarad. So once I've done this, I actually find all the components for my tap capacitor circuit. Okay, from here you can see that I basically need my C1 and C2 Okay, which I have found earlier on, and also my inductor value. Okay, so just want to re-emphasize what is CSE. So CSE is simply this step here, CSE. So I found this. Okay, I can actually find, because the parallel, the capacitor are in parallel. Okay, so therefore, oh, sorry, the capacitor are in series, so I need to use this form to calculate. So hopefully, this is clear how can we do this question on the tap capacitor circuit. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Thank you so much, guys.